revival, um, both in America and in other, other countries, it's uh, so often started with youth. Um, I think about the Hebrides revival back in the 40s, 1940s, when uh, just the Hebrides Islands up above uh, Great Britain, and they had been praying for uh, hour after hour, day after day, month after month. In fact, they had this little barn um, that all the people from the village would come and they would pray in this barn all night long, not giving God any rest, just kind of getting their hands around the ankles of God and crying out and saying, God, give us, give us revival in our, in our islands. The Lord's going to come and revival's going to break out. God has just fallen like an amazing way. I mean, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. Just this generation is going to be the one that's going to reach, I feel, the ends of the world. You know, it's going to start here and it's just going to go out with the kids. I think it's the issue of hiddenness. Um, young men and women who will who will, will find their prayer closet, who will cry out um, day and night before the Lord um, through deep intercession, asking God for revival, asking God for brokenness. Because brokenness, when we have that in our heart, that becomes a balm in the heart of God and, and it produces revival in our, in our own personal lives as well as, you know, as a nation or as a group. You see, you need to understand my father back in those days especially, well no, back in those days, now he doesn't do it. If, you, if he said midnight, you did not come home at 12.01. Okay, you came home at midnight. In fact, you came home at 11.55, okay? And so he was a strict disciplinarian, and, 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 and I'm glad, thank God I had that in my life. But I came home, and he's going, and I just lose it. Do you remember this in the kitchen on Oxford? I mean, I lose it. I go off with my dad. You know, I can never live up, and I'm crying, and I'm yelling at my father, thinking any moment my head's going to roll across the kitchen floor. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just... I lost it. And you know what? I, I really believe it was the Holy Spirit. I looked over at my father, and he just had tears rolling down his eyes. And I began to weep, and we just embraced one another. And I really, he looked at me in my eyes, and he said, do you know that out of all of your friends and every teenager I've ever met, I would choose you if I didn't know you every time because of the call of God on your life and because of the, the, the love for Jesus you have, the compassion in your heart, the gifting, and, and who you are as a man. I would choose you every time. You know, you hear that from dad and you just, you, you lost it. You're done. We broke through something at that point in our relationship. We became best friends from that day forth. When you hear your identity spoken from a father, it will change your life. When you get this thing that I want to comfort the heart of God and he comes and speaks his comfort to you first, you will run with him because you have identity and purpose. Our goal today is to figure out as individuals and as a corporate body, as the youth in America, to comfort the heart of God with our lives. We're going to one place to comfort the heart of God today. That 40% of all the youth in America don't even live with their fathers anymore. It says that 30% plus of the children being born today don't even have a father's name listed on their birth certificate. We're in trouble as a nation. 14% of all of our teenage girls this year will be pregnant and they're birthing more fatherless kids. It's time for daddy, for the father, to step in and take over. We have got to turn these, the youth in this country and point them to the father. You can just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit all over the room. Yeah, it changed my life. I'm not, a, I'm not the same guy anymore. I thought it was awesome and I will never be the same. I fell on my knees and just wept. and kept crying and crying for two hours. I couldn't stop crying. And God just totally used me. And, and then today, he, he used me even more. He broke me more. And I just want to share it. And God just, all day, he just been breaking me. And I just praise God. We haven't believed in this generation that they could make a difference in their nation, that they could make a difference in their school or their church. And because of the fatherlessness that they're dealing with, the issues of pain that, are, that, are, that revolve around that, we failed to mobilize them, but I really believe that God is about to mobilize this generation for a holy purpose. It's the weak things. It's us, it's us who can stand on a corner and, and play a song and lead people to the Lord that we wrote because of the time that we are alone with him. So take your passions, direct them. If you're struggling with a sin, say, God, what is the exact opposite of this? How can you, what's the big Christian word, sanctify? What is, okay, um, uh, how can you redirect it and change it into a godly passion? Let's buck up and realize that we're going to go on in life and we've got to become young men and young women that realize that all people suffer with pain. All people have problems. And the key is not looking inwardly, but the key is looking upwardly and saying, oh God, 
I'm broken, I'm weak, I'm in pain. But I choose the tough stuff. I think God is saying if, if this generation will seek my face wholeheartedly, I will do unprecedented things and I will bring revival if we will just look to Him instead of looking into ourselves and finding our identity and selfishness, all that stuff in us. And when we look to Him, we're a completely different people and we finally have meaning and definition and that's where true life comes from. And finally we've got something to live for and that's what we're all searching for anyway. You know at a student conference recently, the mics opened up to the young people and they just came up on stage and they were pouring out their heart. They were crying. From the depths of their heart, they were crying out to the Father about their generation and how they see it. And this young woman, about 14 years old, stands up to the, to the mic and she, she begins to weep in brokenness before the Father. And she says, God, I know that you love us, but do you feel our pain and can you stop it? And as we heard this cry of prayer go forth, we just began to weep and say, Lord, they're, they're, this generation is so desperate for you to come and show them who you are. This generation needs passion, a holy romance with the Father. This generation needs to know that in their pain and where they're living, in the molestation and in the abortion and in the, and all the sick sin that's going on in this earth, that there's a daddy in heaven that's going to come in passion. And he's just waiting for us to cry out to him so that he can come and present himself and come and see his bride and present his son, Jesus, to his bride, the church on earth. It's church for a new generation. It's young people that are going after God with everything that's in them because they know the pleasure that he has for them in his heart. This is the brave heart generation. Hold up your swords. Just don't say it. I want you to see the shackles unloosed of thousands of kids across America. You're proclaiming freedom. Freedom! Freedom! The Lord is knighting you into his army. I've got great hope for this generation that they would know the heart of the love of the Father and their forefathers and they would rise up as a radical house of prayer to claim their inheritance and to see the nation of America return to the Lord in a massive revival. Whoever heard of an army that conquered the earth in mourning and weeping and brokenness? That's what we're doing. We're calling a holy fast of students who will come and stand before the Lord in humility, in brokenness before their Father, crying out for mercy, coming with all of their spiritual poverty, and just standing before the Lord. Those of you who are committed, you feel the Spirit of God burning in you right now, and you're committed to praying and fasting a day a week that God would bring revival on our nation and fill the stadiums with students. If that's you, don't make a hasty decision. If that's you, you come. Just stand up here at the front. The Lord has asked us to go travel to the cities across this nation in America. And we hold events. They start on Friday night, they go all day on Saturday, and we're watching students in every city that we go to come into this revelation of who the Father is, and once they catch that thing, they, they want to go and run with Him, and they say, how do I go do that? What is it that I can go do as a young person and as a youth pastor? What can I die for? I want to die for something that's bigger than what I am. And so we've asked God, what is that very thing that we can give these people? How can we serve the local body in the best way? And we believe with all of our hearts that it's prayer and fasting. It's calling the youth to gather in one place, a sacred assembly of students, to cry out to the Father and say, God, would you bring revival in our land? Would you break our hearts? Would you show us how much you love us? And you know what? I want you to come and be a part of that thing. I want you to, to rally your students. I want you to pray and fast with one another and come be a part of what God's doing, not in Rock the Nations, but what he's doing in America. Um, I think that he is a lot more real than me than he once was. I'm gonna go home and totally give my life over to God now. Okay. Make a lot of changes. I can't explain it, man. He's just, he's too big to, to put words on, man. He's just, he does too much for people. He's, it's, it's too big, exactly. man. Exactly. He's, he's, he's the father, man. He's, he's, he's the top. He's just there for us all. The conference was awesome. It was life changing. God's given me, a, he's broken my heart for the loss of my school. And, it, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let him go to hell anymore. I'm gonna 
lead the life of God better than before. Oh yeah, my expe expectations were met and just blown away, you know. God just, you can't, you can't plan God, you know. God just does what he wants to do and you just gotta sit back and, you know, play, you know, play along with God, you know. No agenda, nothing, you know. And that's gonna be the true testimony, is staying on God's side. You know, not going back to Satan because he's forcing us. Staying on God's side and saying, no, this is what I want to do. This is what I believe. This is my testimony, and this is how I'm going to stay because that's what I'm all about, and it's God. You know, this isn't about Rock the Nations, and it's not about our different denominations or our own spiritual beliefs. This is about God issuing a sovereign call to the Christian students of our nation. It's about students tithing the teenage years of their life to the Father as they come together in their, in their closets at home and in corporate groups, praying and fasting, repenting for their sins, and asking God to bring revival on our nation. It's about students coming together and saying, I want to fast and pray and cry out to God on behalf of uh, Team Mania, asking God to move powerfully in Youth for Christ and DCLA. It's asking God to do a powerful work in the leaders and in the people that are involved in YWAM across this earth. It's about calling young men and women and fathers into the stadiums of this nation, crying out together in reconciliation, fathers reconciling to children, children reconciling to fathers. I want to thank you for taking the time to consider Prayer Storm and this vision that God has laid on our hearts. And I ask that you would take some time and just ask the Father what your involvement is supposed to be. Thanks. Yeah.